Want to order the January 4th, 2022 Belfont Area School District Board of Directors work session. Everyone, please rise. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Member roll call, please. Dr. Badger. Mr. Bechtel. Here. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Here. Mr. Gazar. Here. Dr. Perini. Here. Ms. Royer. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Steiner. Here. Mrs. Weaver. Here. Dr. Badger did let us know that he had prior commitment and he was unable to make it tonight. Uh, do we have a motion for approval of the agenda for this evening? Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Okay. So uh, our sole item of business uh, this evening is um, further discussion um, on how to move forward with the district's logo, mascot, and moniker. Uh, we really don't have anything structured in place for this evening. Uh, we did have a work session uh, in December. I think that was productive and informative. Um, I think that uh, we're approaching a point with this where um, everyone on uh, whatever side they may be with it, uh, feels as though uh, we need to come to some sort of conclusion one way or the other with this. Uh, no one wants to see us spending any more of our time on this because it's been going on for a long time. And we certainly have a lot of really pressing and important issues that we need to turn our focus on um, uh, a lot more than this. Um, so I, I think this is, um, an, one last opportunity for us all to talk about this together uh, with the public, um, uh, hearing what we have to say about it and trying to figure out what direction uh, that we should take from this point moving on. So um, with that, I'll just open up the floor for discussion. I'll just say that I shared in a Google document um, two images that I something that I just saw yesterday. Um, one was another school district's use of the same B that we have. I happened upon this <clears throat> when I was watching television. It was a political commercial for, I think it was someone who's running for um, Pat Toomey's seat. I don't remember the name of the gentleman. And he's speaking, I think he's the one from Vermont. And he comes from, I think, Bloomsburg. And <clears throat> I saw a bee that looked exactly like ours. And I thought, you know, that's interesting because we did discuss the inability to exclusively use the bee because it's a font. However, they did something with it, which I thought was very interesting. And you can see on your Google Doc that it is in the top part of the bee that they made it their own. So they have some, um, whatever their image is coming out of the top part of the B. When I looked around at the school district, their football field looks exactly like ours. It has the same B, their same logo. So that was just something that I thought was interesting. And um, maybe another thing to consider is the crest that we currently have. And I wasn't sure exactly what the images were in the crest. And so I wanted a close up view of what is in our crest, just to see if maybe we could utilize any parts of that. So we have the keystone, we have a book for academics, we have the iron furnace, and we have Governor Curtin. So just a place to start. Um, I just thought it would be interesting to look at that just as a point of reference. So that's just where, what I wanted to share. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. 
I recall in the press, and I'm, I may be bringing this as I'm getting old, but I think there are, there's some significance to the seven pillars at the top of that. The that governors? Too. Yes, the top of that crest, if you count, there are seven pillars. Um, there's some significance to that, but I don't remember what it is. It has something to do maybe with the academy? I, I don't remember. We need Patty Hill here. Yeah. Or Mr. Yeah. Maybe seven virtues? Might be the seven virtues. It could be the seven virtues. I, I don't. I know it has a significance. I just don't remember what the significance is. When we get through the branding process, it'd be really good to track down that history from whoever has it and make that part of the the guide so people understand what they're looking at. Do you know what what year they designed this? I know students were heavily involved, and one of the teachers. I don't. I don't. If I had a better memory, I would, but I don't. I've had lengthy conversations with Patty about it. I was going to say, I think Patty is yeah. important. Yes, and she can tell you who, when, names, every yes. Um, and I just, and She's we've so had well. conversations, but I, I just don't recall. And I think, too, now that I'm looking at it, that the star in the center has a significance, too, the figure at the center. Like the big compass rose? Yes. This is like a game show. Can we have fun with fun? <laughs> yeah, I feel like Patty Hiller had a big thing on Facebook with the explanation for all of it within the past year. Yeah, I on uh, I think in the the yeah. alumni and educators page. But at some point we do need to I don't know if it's the word trademark or copyright that image. In the high school handbook. There is uh, a couple paragraphs about the history of the crest. Yeah. I can share that if you'd like. You want to read it? I can read it. The school crest was designed in the late 1960s. The Balfour Company and Mr. Hugh Manchester, a local historian, were commissioned to design the crest. The symbols were determined by a school wide, community based contest. Beginning at the top of the crest, you find columns that depict the former Belfont Academy very prestigious prep school. During the 1930s, the Belfont High School was destroyed by fire, yet it continued to operate by boarding classes at the Belfont Academy. The original high school facade also featured the stately column. Continuing clockwise on the crest, you will find an open book symbolizing knowledge and learning. In the lower right-hand corner of the crest is a replication of a statue of Governor Andrew, Andrew Gray Curtin, which stands on the diamond in Belfont. Governor Curtin was born in Belfont and was a very important politician during the Civil War. His interest in local education led him to be one of the original members of the Belfont Area School Board. He also played a prominent role in founding Penn State University. An iron furnace is depicted in the lower left-hand corner. The entire economy of this area was at one time based on the iron, iron industry. Its inclusion is therefore a tribute to the workers of the area. The upper left-hand corner of the crest houses the Pennsylvania Keystone State symbol. Surrounding the Keystone symbol are five stars. Each star represents a Pennsylvania governor who either was born in or lived in Belfont. These governors were Curtin, Beaver, Hastings, Packer, and Bilger. The star in the middle uh, symbolizes Polaris, the North Star in the, in the constellation Ursa Minor. This star supposedly represents direction and aim in one's education. The crest is currently visible on the high school, on the official high school class rings, district stationery, graduation announcements, and written programs for end of the year activities. The crest is also displayed proudly in the library and in the high school theater. Nice. So that's yeah. in, if, if you want to see that that's for yourself, <laughs> probably if you get, if you look up on the high school website, get on their handbook, I think it's on like page seven. Or actually six. Thank you, Dr. Vincent.
So with that as a backdrop, I guess I have a couple questions. Um, I feel like, and I'm sad that CNET is not here, but I guess we still maybe have, do we have people online watching? So maybe for everybody's benefit, there's a lot of talk about mascot versus logo, moniker, imagery, crest. Every one of those things is different, but they're being used as a single term of, and, and around the controversy that we face. And I wonder if we can't just go through some of them. I'm sure there's agreement on this board and in the community that we don't have a mascot, we don't need a mascot, we don't want a mascot. I, I could be wrong. But maybe we could go down through some of those and just define what the differences are and maybe even define what, uh, I believe, Mr. Barnford, you had some history on when the board voted to not have uh, an Indian head image as our logo, but rather the B that we use now. Then let's maybe put some history and backdrop to all of this. You want that now? So, well, if you need to look it up, I can talk about. Go ahead. We can. Okay. So, so mascot. We're all in the understanding. Of mascot. We're referring to somebody running around the field, or in a stadium, or in the basketball court. We don't have a mascot sanctioned by the school. I don't think anybody here thinks that that's appropriate anymore. And, and we, we're not talking about designing or voting on a mascot. Are we all in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. So then the next thing is a logo. We keep talking about our current logo. Through, this is where I lean on Mr. Burford. Through a board vote, I think it was in 2015 or 2016. It's July 14th, 2015. Our district logo is the Block B, period. We still have imagery around from the past, but there was a board vote to make the Block B our logo way back in 2015. And that was accepted by the community because we weren't tearing things up and making things, spending uh, education dollars to, to try to revamp. So there's that. Uh, the term moniker has been uh, used quite a bit. I don't know if somebody else wants to explain what, the, what they meant when they're using that uh, term. And then imagery itself, in my mind, would include the, uh, the Indian head image. And then we also have a lot of native imagery around the district, whether it be arrows, feathers, dream catchers, those kind of things. Anybody that was using the term moniker want to explain what they were referring to by using it? So just nickname. Yes. So moniker is just referring to the name Red Raiders, right? Yes. So many different things all being kind of used as one term. I just want to make sure that we're all talking about the, the same thing when we're having discussions. The presentation that occurred on July 14th, 2015 from the, at the time, Deb Moore and John Clark were co-athletic directors, included a, an effort, and I'm going to read from their PowerPoint, it says, in an effort to move towards unity in our athletic programs, the athletic department is narrowing down what can be used representing all of our teams, making them one team. And out of those narrowing down was the dream catcher symbol with a B and the block B and the, the uh, known Native American imagery, the, the Indian head, so to speak. And at that time, at that meeting, the board had decided that the block B would be the main image and the others would be secondary images um, it doesn't necessarily say that they're going to be completely faded out, but they really said that the Block B is going to represent our one team. It was all about coming up with an image that was for one team. Um, that's where that came from. That was back on July 14th, 2015. And that was a vote or that was a presentation that the board had? It's hard to tell. I, I mean, it's hard to tell what was happening that night because they voted on uniforms and all kinds of things. Um, I don't remember voting. On that, I remember. I vaguely remember the pre. I remember the presentation, and I remember them talking about it. John, I think you were there too, but I don't remember a, an actual vote. I think that they decided this, right. and we were like, "Okay, that sounds." That that was what I thought my understanding was prior to this. But I don't. Not that not, I mean, not that I think there's much difference because the board had an objection at that time to that they would have voiced that. right so to me it's no different just than curious. Curious. Yeah, what it was just but i don't remember an actual vote but that doesn't mean that we did right i mean that's been so long ago sure. so their push that night was for branding 
and mm -hmm. whatever we chose to do that we trademarked right. it and copyrighted it so that we could have. They did not include any discussion that I can find on the crest. It was coming from the athletic department because it was athletics and the premise was they were trying to, um, as I said, use certain symbols to make the athletic department be one team so that all of the athletic teams were using the block B or all the athletic teams were using at that time the dream catcher. But I, the discussion that night was though that the block B would be the primary uh, symbol of the one team. That was my number. <laughs> And so in our discussion here about the crest uh, and possible logo like the B that you had shown, um, I'm kind of getting the feel that the crest is used almost exclusively for educational materials and the image or logo is, is for all things athletics. For the most part, there's some overlap. I mean, you walk into the high school and you see the crest, but you can also see in the past the Native American head. So, you know, around the, as far as is how it's majorly used yes absolutely but it's not to say that you couldn't see the crest at a football game or you couldn't see the uh you know on the band uniforms or something it's mm -hmm. it's not that you don't see it someplace or another but for the most part absolutely that mascot piece is more or less for the athletics and the crest has been the letterhead and the the uh, academic piece or the logo so if we don't oh. use the word mascot anymore i'm right? sorry that's okay <laughs> So does anyone other than a sports team use an image? Because we, we keep saying athletics. Um, as far as these images, off the right, top. like even the B or did any other organization other than the athletics use the Indian head? Was it anywhere? It was on the band. I mean, the band used it, but like, no drama group. So are we exclusively talking about athletics and how this impacts athletics? I, I see it as two things. So if we're, I'm hopeful that we can go through a branding process and get trademark images that are appropriate, copyrighted, anything that we can. And to me, with both the crest and whatever imagery or anything else that's decided on all the way down to actual colors and design features of different uniforms so that it's all laid out. I'm trying to find the sample that we had before. If I can find it, I'll have Mr. Funk put it up on the board there. Again, it's like, um, let me give you an example. So we have, uh, I I'm just making things up, a group of middle school teachers. Let's use the middle school teachers. And they all bought matching t-shirts. They all have the Indian head on. And it was just a matter of they just did like it wasn't it wasn't athletically inclined and it wasn't academically inclined it was just the t-shirts the got school's at the logo it was the school's picture at the time um the bocce team well the bocce team but they're an athletic team you know there um, could be clubs too that have used it and we yeah. yeah you know we may not know about it there's probably lots of things that we don't know that's why i'm hesitant to say that it's exclusively athletic with athletics because it is other places This is Brown On July 14th, there was no no vote. There was no vote no. behind the minutes. There so I think that's kind of the the spark is although it was unofficial that that was no longer the image when we made it official. I think that seemed to to spark the, for lack of a better word, the controversy. We probably well, want to ask it was secondary. It was, secondary. it was a secondary. So then it goes from secondary image to where second. Because it had been fading for lack of better work over the years since it was first broached in the 90s. Would you agree with that? Or am I just making that up? Or is that just the way I saw it? <laughs> Excuse me. I, I don't know. I, it's be, when you get to the year before 2003, I wasn't here. So it's hard for me to, and it's also hard for me to remember conversations that happened. I do remember the conversation that evening, though, was um, somewhat lengthy, uh, I thought, um, about using the B as the primary and the, the others as the secondary. But I'm shaking their head. I, 
I, I, I, okay. I vaguely remember it all. Yeah. I was sitting back there then, you, not, when, probably when not paying a lot of attention. What year? I'll be 15. honest. It was March of 15, but Donna and I were on. I mean, I don't remember a whole lot of controversy coming up with it. I no. remember just no. the, the the athletic department presenting that this was what they wanted to use to show that they wanted it to be united. I don't. I don't remember. And it, was that when they got rid of black also as the third color? Because I do remember that. Black was before that. That night, what they were talking about at the time, a lot of college teams are in that time frame. A lot of college teams were, football teams were going to a gray. Instead of having a red and white uniforms, they would have red and gray uniforms. Whether, and so there was, a con, there was a discussion about getting new uniforms and using the color gray. And in that discussion, then we went back to the whole black thing when we got rid of the black color and, the, and that. So black happened prior to, to that discussion, but gray came up with that discussion. I wish I had that. Mr. Funk, I sent that email to the guy. If we can. But I do agree. I don't remember that much controversy. That I really don't. I think because it came from it came from, from the, the teams and the students and, and the, the department admin. Yeah. And the idea was they were trying to unite the teams because we had, you know, some teams that were using just feathers. I don't remember what the circumstances we had, were. We had a lot of teams and/or groups making up their own. And we were also trying to get people back on track to use what was only approved by the school board. There we go. Ken's older than I am, so he has better memory too. So, so district years. I, I, do, I do think in, in some of the history that I read, it is it was characterized as being more respectful. Um, that some of the switch and some of the change evolving to something that was more respectful and talk about, I think written in one of the history pieces that I said about the evolution of of that. Um, I mean I you know wasn't I don't know if that language was used at the time, but certainly it had been used to describe that that kind of shift or as we talked about previously, sort of a evolution, evolving nature from what had been previously or duty in the Native American um thematic more yeah. appropriate or what was the term historically accurate Res and respectful respect. respectful yeah. is yeah. what is what i is what i distinctly remember and i can you know go back to where where that history was that and that's where i and that's where i get stuck somewhat in saying at that time if we were thinking of moving in this direction and moving away from the indian head imagery to be more respectful, that that in and of itself, in my mind, was saying we were kind of acknowledging that maybe while we had any tradition might need to change or should change in the times. And that and back then, you know, six, seven years ago, or how many years ago is at this time? Would that coincide with the removal of imagery in colleges in Pennsylvania. I'm trying to think of IUP and that was, was a lot earlier. Yeah, that was the ship, ship was, was early, yeah, ship was earlier too. How about was Juniata changed? I was just I'm just trying to think of that. If all the removal of all Native American mascots in collegiate in Pennsylvania, co you know, coincided with that, because, like you said, was it a deliberate thing on the board's behalf? Maybe not the board, but that, but perhaps athletics. I don't know. It might not have been described as such at the time, but it have, was characterized later as that. Um, you know, I mean, it, certainly unity. I, I, I think you could 
say that that is something that might be more unifying, perhaps? I think there was a national discussion, the 2013, 14, 15 era, because of the Washington Redskins and the, the whole national discussion. Sure. So that might have precipitated the discussion here as well. What are the athletic teams all using now in their uniforms? It, it seems as though they've all gone to the B. I think and just so. the word Raider. Uh, as far as I know, I know we were we were trying to get a, a handle on where we had the imagery on things. That Deb had said that a majority of the teams had did not have the Indian head logo on their their uniforms. I assume that to be then they have the B or they just have Raiders or have Red Raiders or something to that effect. Um, I, I could be wrong. But. Did the football team have the Dreamcatcher? They had those on their helmets, I believe. They got the uniforms last year, two years ago. And do they just say Raiders? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think they do say just say Raiders. Yes. So nothing still says red. I don't, I, again, I can't be exclusive yeah. and say absolutely, but I do know that I think there were, they hand the uniforms down or they share them down. And for some reason, I think there was a junior high track team or a junior high somebody that might have the Indian head still on. Uh, hmm. I, I don't oh, know. Oh, cross country, I wonder. Could be that. Having been a volunteer coach, <laughs> I should have remembered that. So as the process evolves, and as it was mentioned in 2015 when they made that decision or had that discussion, the sample branding guide that's on the, the big screen there, I think is what we're all talking about trying to get to. So we don't have uh, individual teams trying to design their own things with their own parameters. I mean, this sets everything. I don't know if you might want to scroll through that, uh, Mr. Fung, and show us the samples. Approved marks, approved colors, right down to the federal color number, size, placement. So they're welcome to go out and get any kind of uniform, cups, hats, whatever they want, but they have to has to be in compliance with this official branding guide. How cute kid. Different marks for different grade levels. So who would they have employed to do this service? Well, I can tell you, and he's volunteered to um, to help us. Because maybe that would be our next step. And see, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get back to a branding committee and, and move the process forward in a much more measured fashion uh, so that we can participate with maybe a sketch artist or someone who is very familiar with a branding guide and can help us through that process, getting more input from uh, unrestricted input from community, staff, students, and move it forward. Obviously, but adding the two pieces together rather yeah. than just the local community right. committee or a professional putting the two together. Well, I think it probably at this point just needs to be a board committee so we can we can keep it moving. We can meet outside of regular board meetings without a quorum and just keep the process moving on a little bit more of a fast track because trying to wait every two weeks to have a public meeting makes it really difficult trying to meet as a committee of the whole. I also would envision this would be time, uh, time limited, as you said, measured, thoughtful, unpressured way of, pro of proceeding through this process. I also would envision this uh, branding guide is also being a way to memorialize some of these things we've talked about in terms of the use of some reasons. So if we had the B as our primary logo, then it would say, this is the primary logo. Um, it would say currently Belfont is not, has no mascot, no use of mascot. Those kinds of things could be uh, memorialized in this document. It could be a living document moving forward then the people could work from as things evolve or change or other decisions were made. Is it something that's going to be carved in stone necessarily? So this guy here, Brian, he's a he's actually an art teacher in uh, Cambria County. He uh, is a freelance illustrator and graphic designer with 20 years experience, has clients such as Scholastic, McGraw-Hill, Penguin Publishing Houses and more. 
He designed the Sheets truck logos that you see going down the row. Uh, and of the different samples that we had before when we were trying to move this process along, this was one of the best ones that, that I saw that I liked. Uh, and I had asked him if we could share this at a public board meeting, you know, even though it was really his material. He said, to feel free to do that. And he'd be happy to work with us if we get to that point. Are we dancing around the issue that we don't want to talk about, though? Well, uh, in my mind, I, I think we need to talk about where we need to go okay. instead of arguing or, right. or mm -hmm. debating an actual image. I, I don't. I think we saw what happens when nine or 10 people sit in here and debate what is right or wrong for the district and then make a decision. Uh, the democratic process takes care of that and realigns it with the community. I think we need to get back to the branding process and move it along in a measured way and, and have some, some real samples and some, some real professional help mm -hmm. uh, along the way that we can bring back. And then, as I say, when you're meeting as a committee without a quorum, you can meet a lot and do a lot of things and make great progress in a two week period and then give a presentation to the whole group in public. But That's how I kind of envision it going forward if we can. Have a back and forth with the committee work and bring it to the public meeting, feedback, input, do a back in the committee, just take our time, work through it. Yes. And I, and I think we mentioned like we don't want every future board to go through this right. same process. So, not that I want it to take two years, but we have two years to get this right, be, be slow enough and purposeful enough, transparent enough to bring the community along with us so that we're not back here in two years doing the same thing again. But the board should also decide what we all agree on as far as what we are expecting from this image. So, for example, in talking to um, unofficially to some of the people on the committee, I know they debated. Do we want an image that is historically related to Belfont's history? Not necessarily our tradition, because that, like the Native American, that's our tradition, but that's not our history. So does, does our image have to be historically accurate? Is that what we're asking for it? So like we should give a parameter, something that we all agree on. In my opinion, we spent a lengthy amount oh, of time on this committee. <laughs> so you know what I'm we talking spent about. A lengthy amount of time. I mean, that was one of the questions I posed. It was a discussion question with the group one night to try to get discussion started. Was what role does history play in what we do? And that that was as much about the press too as anything. But no, what role does what role should history play in our in trademarking our history? I don't think we came to any answers to that question. <laughs> but it seemed like they all did at the end. The four images <clears throat> seemed like they did. Well, and, and that was part of the presentation I did all. I mean, we talked about his historical significance. So he has to some extent that's true. I would just caution you for too many guidelines or restrictions other than obvious things like it can't be obscene it can't be disrespectful i think those are just kind of a given but i think one of the problems that the committee had last time was the parameters were so narrow that then they were just really they were trying hard they put a lot of hours in trying to stay within those parameters when really the majority of them didn't want to be within those parameters they had a lot of great ideas outside of those parameters and I would just kind of like to see it. Let's just open it back up and see what the community and, and committee can come up with. Instead of restricting them right off, right off the bat, I don't think they're going to bring anything you know, appropriate. And who defines what appropriate is? You know, that's, that's kind of a pretty broad term. Just my thought. Dr. Perini, again, you've been through this and I'm throwing you on the spot again. But you're the experienced one. I don't know how, what experience it is at all, <laughs> other than all this great here. Are there things, the question that keeps coming up in my mind, are there things that should be on the table or off the table? If you give this to a local artist, to a graphic artist to design, 
Is there anything that should be not part of the consideration? Not to narrow it too much, just is there anything that we can still that we can specifically say, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want the crest as part of it or whatever. I'll just use that as an example. So yes, is that something that we should all agree on? What are those parameters? Because Tammy, you said that you felt, the committee felt that the rules were too narrow. I thought they were too, I got the impression that they were too broad, that they didn't even know where to start. What, what seemed to be handcuffing everybody? The handcuffing came with the word readers and the image, because if you read that, that motion and we've read it a thousand times if you read the motion that the, the discrepancy comes between using the word raiders because the motion it either implies or indicates that rate we needed something to represent raiders and so when you say okay we'll keep the raiders i'm not saying we shouldn't there are only so many things that would represent a raider in our minds and that's where we felt or that I, and i'm speaking to the committee dr bank is uh, shaking his head too i would agree with that 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 linking of the word raiders and saying in the motion that it had to be something that represents raiders made it difficult and you know so we we were stretching and we were supposed to come up with three ideas of how those images or whatever they might be would represent a raider of something without doing the Ethnicity, ethnicity, all of those things. Using people. Using people, basically speaking. If I could, if it's that hard and strenuous to try to come up with something, you don't need to force doing it. Like, if we're agreeing that the block B is functional for now, we don't have to just try to force and figure out what it's going to be, you know? I, I agree with that. And just move on with copywriting the crest, because as I showed you, that B is used by other people. I should say, though, that <laughs> let me say, I agree with that with the name Raiders. I do have, I mean, I know with the, the last meeting you talked you know, about compromise and those kinds of things. I think it would be more difficult for me because of the history and the context for Red Raider and the Black Community to kind of continue because in the absence of a, a different depiction, that, that I think would be, would leave a, a lot of room for, for the Native American imagery to kind of return, not necessarily maybe sanctioned by the school, but otherwise, you know, otherwise, I just think that the, the I, I, I can see the Black B and, and Raider working. I think a lot of teams have worked with that over, you know, I bought Raider gear this past fall from other teams and booster clubs and, and all of that. So that was also the, the limitation of the committee because the motion said that we were supposed to come up with three images that represents Raiders. And we had many committee members who just wanted to keep the block B. And that was one of the things on the table, but the motion said that we had to come up with three images. And, and, and the block B wasn't going to go away. So they were afraid if we put the block B in that or try to do that, and then the board said, okay, we want this, X, whatever that, the Knights or whatever it was, then the block B would go away and they didn't want the block B to go away. So we were, it was a dilemma. And, and the night of that, they're like, we're keeping the block B, aren't we? And I said, yes, we'll keep the block B. And so we, that's why the block B wasn't part of that. But the motion said that the block, that we had to come up with these images to represent raiders and the block B doesn't necessarily represent a raider. See, I, I think the other thing we're maybe losing sight of, or maybe, I'm sorry, maybe losing sight of here is that um, all those things get flushed out then as a committee of the whole at a regular board meeting in public. So it's, again, my preference would be not to hold back or tie the branding committee to any guidelines. Let them come up with whatever the community decides, whatever the, the committee decides. Obviously, they're going to have several layers of whittling things down and put their best foot forward. It could come before the board then and the board could say, oh, start over. You know, we don't like these and here's why. And then it starts over. But if we go through that process, you know, whether it takes two months or two years, I, I think we're going to get everything that people want to have seen out in the open for discussion and 
an up or down vote or a recommendation or whatever, you know, however that turns out. But just because there's no restrictions on the branding committee doesn't mean that you're losing your voice or your say in the in the final product because nothing can happen on the committee as a as an ad hoc committee, they won't make any decisions other than bring recommendations and then the decisions will be made here in public at the board. And this is a better way to get to true consensus, right? And, and to trust true consensus versus kind of just hammering it through and you know, leave. so yes. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, uh, you would you would give the project to the graphic artist and say, you know, come up with some images and bring them back to us and, and see how they, oh, my understanding. Uh, well, I, I think part of what he's saying is not just for an image, but all the different itineration of the B for using the B and the colors and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Is it just specifically driven toward the, toward the design of a new image? It's all the branding of like you saying the colors and and, and how it looks for the elementary schools. Maybe they have a different B kind of thing going on, those types of things, right? Yeah, and I also think that, I'm not sure that you even jump that far forward right off the bat. I think that if a committee is formed and that committee meets, decides if they, what help they wanna bring in from outside, and then you start with some history so they have a full understanding of what we already know if it's someone from outside. Like you can't just, we can't say, well, here's what we want, draw us a picture of it, because we don't know what, it's going to go yet. So we give that person some history of our board meetings, of the controversy, of the history of the mascot uh, and logo and imagery, and then uh, have some discussions about where we've been trying to go. And then do you have any art artistic renditions of these maybe different areas and see what they can come up with. Uh, but I, I think it's a bigger process to get everybody's voice heard and, and hopefully in the end have something that everybody, whether they are all on board with it, they can at least understand and accept and, and get behind. So it's not a, I don't see a, I would like to bring outside help in far before we get to where we have a decision made if this is what we want, now let's have someone design it. Does that make sense? Another example is the crest we're looking at up here. Like they have four different versions of the crest. Our crest, potentially they could freshen it up. You know, it's a great crest. You know, how about if we had a black in there? You know what I mean? And so for different uses and things like that, that would be another purpose for that. And can I also ask, are, are we saying that our discussion of the mascot is now off the table or stays on the table or the mascot itself is that person who's in, in present at the games do we continue to discuss a mascot or can we well, say the district hasn't had a mascot okay, in quite so, some time so i think we, everyone as john said is it it's generally something that people just aren't doing to a great extent i think every if there's a consensus on anything that's probably the one thing we have consensus on yes that's a great question and as, as far as like if you're talking about district business or when do we talk about it again i think it's just as the as the branding committee feels they have enough information to present that's meaningful then to give an update rather than saying we need an update every meeting or something just or sometimes what i've done in the past in creating a committee i'll ask for a, a committee update at least once a month or something like that just to get a feel for us checking on the committee to make sure things are happening and you know, but but not to open up like a huge discussion and have the same debates we've had uh, we, we need the community to understand that we're working on it and by giving regular updates and making progress hopefully we can move past that kind of thing and get everybody engaged in the solution rather than digging into a corner and again, if it was memorialized in this document, the district does not have or utilize any kind of a mascot. That way, if any, anything cramped up, people would just say refer to the, to the branding guy. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and we know that, that it would be documented moving forward. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No, you know. Then that would protect our imagery from others as well. Right. Yes. 
I also think for, for the committee that, that you're talking about to be really efficient and effective, I think it's going to be really important to get um, the, the professional artist whoever that is involved to kind of lead and direct that committee right from the right from the very beginning because I feel like you know with, with the committee that that, that we had um, it was I don't know it was hard it, it was a, we, we didn't really have that professional and we didn't have that professional people. background to, right. to, to necessarily lead that and we almost need somebody who's who's gone through this it's what they do to come in and lead us down that path and it was actually the committee who suggested that at one point was <laughs> like you guys are helping can we have somebody else but they were i mean it was a great you know and i keep saying this but i don't like there have been some people on that committee that have been in the lines because they were on that committee and they they were a fantastic group of people that work really hard to come to consensus they work really hard when they were very much on either side of whatever it might be to just work together and hear each other and listen to each other. And uh, but, yeah, they, at times they felt like, you know, they just, they kind of were like, just tell us what we need to be doing. Or how do we need to be doing. I just think we're gonna be spinning, spinning our tires if we don't have that person right away kind of showing us what we need to do or directing those conversations. And, and asking us, the questions we should be asking because we don't even know what we should be asking so we can't provide an answer to a question we don't know and the, that was the genesis of my question to you is how much how is this going to operationalize over over time and who will who would be the lead person at this and would we leave it to the artist and to a certain degree i think that might be people i'm sorry yeah, that's fine well so i, I think from a protocol standpoint, uh, the committee chair would, would lead. However, the committee chair can appoint someone else to, to lead the meetings or, you know, is that, I think once the committee is formed and, and they meet, then they can decide, you know, how do we, who we want to bring in, when do we want to bring them in, how do we want the, you know, so, yeah, that's. And an advisor. That's, yeah, and whatever, I mean, even the chair of that, the chair of the committee can make someone, you know, have a co-chair or whatever. But, just direct that person, you lead the meetings and, and help us along. And then as a chair of the committee, we report back to the board kind of thing, so. I'd like to double back though on what uh, Ms. Burniford had mentioned about the rebranding commission. I mean, by all report, good people who uh, did that in good faith, good conscience, um, people from both sides um, and uh, they're to be commended um, and thanked. Uh, they did their level best. Um, but to be blunt, I think that the board did not set them up for success. And um, I, I'd like to thank them for their service. Uh, and if anyone um, has any questions or any criticisms, uh, I think it should be directed at us um, in that regard. So. So do you have someone, John, to reach out to? Do I, do I have one? Do you have a name to reach out to? Uh, well, if we're going to talk to this fellow here. Okay, yeah, I have so yes. And then what, does he submit a proposal like for like how much it might be? To, I mean, yeah, we would, we would have to, to do this, right? Yeah, and we, we couldn't do that without board approval of some right. dollars and, and uh, Mr. Bean approval of, hey, I'm not so sure I want to be sitting here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring any clubs with you. Uh, yeah, so we'd have to talk about, you know, what kind of involvement and what commitment financially that would be and approve that as a board. Do you have a sense of how large of a committee you might like to, to see? Like, how about, right? I mean, I know, I know, you know, Mrs. Burford had opened up to everybody, which is great, but it does, when you have 50 people, that is hard to get things done. So I just didn't know if you had more of an idea or, or So I, I would say, first of all, it's not it's not in my purview. Right, but so I mean, it would be right. Mr. Stein or whatever he decides yeah, leadership, once, but, leadership. But, I, I, but I think that uh, a committee of uh, probably three, maybe four, but at least three board members and, uh, and a few staff would form the, the core committee. 
And then that committee through their discussions, because it's a lot easier to meet when you have fewer people, then that committee then would, hey, we need to pull in this group. So then for a couple of their meetings, I might pull in just for argument's sake, let's say the student body and get some input. Okay. And then and then they're done and then they might go to another group and get input. And then, you know, so I, I I can't say that I want 30 people sitting around that are all named individuals on the committee because it's really hard to get anything done. Right. Um, but I, I think you have the flexibility to, to bring people in and get help as you need it. And some of that you won't know until a recommendations or a progress report is made to the board and someone might suggest, hey, you, you missed this group or what about input from here? And then they can go back and solicit help from that group as well. Can I suggest perhaps a part of the discussion at some point goes back to the memorialization of, of some of the images as well. Uh, you know, the, the images themselves carry a lot of memories and a lot of feelings. And if there was a way to memorialize those kinds of things, that, that might ease. You know, I know we did that. And that helped a bit. It didn't. It didn't heal everything, but it helped a bit. So just uh, you know, having pictures of, of people from 20, 30, 40 years ago in some prominent display place that oh yes may have some of the the older images in them. Just just mm -hmm. kind of helps. Me. So maybe that can be a backdoor type of thing to maybe just keep in mind. I, I just would have to agree with that just from the, the standpoint of staff and things you know when the board made the decision that they did then we had staff members saying am I going to get fired I'm wearing an Indian hat and so um, there was there was like people were afraid and, and I'm going to be honest, I went to a football game and realized there was an Indian in my sweatshirt, so I stood like this for the whole time. <laughs> because I, I, I didn't, but yes, you know, if it, if it isn't such a taboo subject, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I think for me, I always think in terms of moving forward. This is what we do now, moving forward. Not necessarily going back to erase everything that's in the past. So to me, that's that's a distinction. I think, okay, well, when so and so, when my kids graduated, they were Belfort Red Raiders with the Indian head. But now, moving forward, my grandchildren will not be. It's just a mind shift for me personally. I think that is one of the things that caused a lot of controversy over the last two motions with removing. It wasn't real clear about leaving artwork or having a, a memorializing mm -hmm. anything. It was remove, 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 remove. So I, I think that probably added to the level of frustration that we saw in the community and the student body. I, well, I think at the time, I think there were, I mean, I know we had talked about creating something like what you had talked about as well. Um, you know, in the, in the meeting. I don't think it, it was ever about erasing or, or taking that away, but that's an, an argument that's kind of already been, been there and that's not necessarily moving forward. But. Yeah, it's just not in the text of the motion. That, that that's yeah. so sure. Then it leaves so many sure. things up for interpretation and people draw sure. their own conclusions. And... But I think that was the nature of the beast. Just like Dr. Karimi said that the metaphor for ripping the band-aid off, we did that. And then it was out for a while and we didn't know what it was that we were dealing with. But I feel now a lot better, me personally, with coming to some terms of how now we reel this in. Now that the band-aid has been ripped off and we can settle and move on in a systematic, less, uh, I don't know, more sensitive way, maybe. Nope. Can I 
and say one more thing? I think there's some things that we haven't settled. That discussion at the last meeting about readers and red readers, we haven't settled that. And I, I think perhaps the process will help us find this. Not an elimination of one or an elimination of another, but it will help us to settle on that. So even though it would be nice tonight to say this is what we're gonna this is what we're gonna do, maybe we allow the process itself to reveal dictate, to how dictate we that how we move forward. So so we can be, you know, I, I want everybody happy. It's not possible in this life, but I want everybody to be happy and to the to our best extent help everybody to come to not kumbaya, but just to be to be okay with whatever we decide. And so and again keeping our focus not necessarily on what's the right decision for us, but we make decisions on behalf of what's in the best interest of students. Students now who are starting school, you know, in 2022 and forward. What's in the best interest of students? Of course, always with the mind of the taxpayers, because we are all those as well. But that's what I try to keep in my mind too, and that's at the forefront for me personally. Um, the reality is, uh, there really isn't much compromise that needs to be done in this perspective. There's a lot we just talked about that most of us pretty much agree on relative to the, the mascot, even some of the imagery stuff. Uh, but the name, there's no compromise. Right? It's binary, right? Because people either want to keep Red Raider or people want to change Red Raider. And whichever one there is, you're gonna have people who are upset and not happy because that isn't what that is. So, you know, there's no compromise to be had. But again, I think to Dr. Green's point, I think that that gets flushed out in the committee. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the committee comes up with something that has nothing to do with either of those. I don't know. And then they get they get accepted or rejected at the board level. But I think so. I, I think right now, so that we're not functioning in a way that is contradicting existing board resolutions or votes, I honestly think that both of those prior motions need to be rescinded. You reset the process, you begin the branding without restrictions, and you see where the process takes you. It could be that they come back with a block B and we're, we don't have either red or red. It could be that they come back with a, a, a Native American Indian head image and we just say no. Like, it's, but you see my point, let the community and the process unfold, see where it takes us, then, you, then you've got a good pulse on where they want to be. You have the final say, Not, nothing's going to get around this team sitting at this boardroom right now. All decisions will be made here in public. So rather than restrict the process, open the process up and see where it goes, see what people are thinking. I, I really highly doubt that whoever is on that committee is going to bring a recommendation to the board that's flat out inappropriate. But the, the two motions that are there now are they're going to end up with the same uh, conundrum that they had at the last attempt, where uh, to try to operate within those guidelines is so restrictive that you're just going to be trying to pull straws and make stuff up just to try to move the process along. And I don't think that's fair to the process. But that, and I don't know how anybody else feels about that. Just be my recommendation if I were involved in it. And I think recommendations were, could also come from the committee about memorializing. What do we do about artwork versus imagery? What do we do about all those things that should all be flushed out uh, through this process? Basically, you're saying start with a clean slate, in a sense. Well, in a sense, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning sort of a reset to get back where we were before this was I don't know if a better word before it was forced onto the agenda that it was not really district business things were making progress right uh, and i think that we reset it back to that we open it up we get 
then we pull the good ideas that came out of this, whatever the last year and a half that we've been having this discussion, we re-engage with a branding process, we get outside help, we, we pull the community, we, we really open it up to bring ideas in and see what people will think and want. And then you filter that through the committee and get rid of things that are inappropriate or make no sense, you know, and bring some recommendations to the board. The board could say, hey, they like four of these, let's find a way to whittle down four of them. The board may say, no, we don't like any of these. But the final say is with this board. And like I say, we have two years. I, I don't want it to take that long, but to get everybody's input so that people aren't feeling like they're being told what to think or say or how to feel, they, we've got to get it out and let them be part of the process. That's, that sounds fair. I, I don't know about rescinding the motions. Um, I don't know if there's, I mean, because in my mind that that is then taking a step backward to perhaps go forward. I don't know if there is a way that that committee as charged could have it opened up to make a recommendation for the board to then rescind and accept this image. You know what I mean? Like to, to say, rather than rescind now and say, go forth and do, do whatever, the committee could say, we recommend that you rescind and here's what we recommend you replace it with. So that it's 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 right there all in one, one wow. action, you know, step. You know, it, 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 you know, I think, yeah, I, that that's the way that I would see it. Um, as making sense. So you know what's being decided. And perhaps that is to say, you know, that, that that committee comes forth and says, hey, we have this image and we want to use this image with Red Raider and this is our branding for it. Or will you adopt this? And that's the way I would like to see it if, if we move forward with it. I agree. I would rather do it that way than rescind the motions. I would rather rescind the motions. Was there, wow. a, was there a time limit on the uh, when this had to be accomplished? Yes. On the motion. On the motion. Everything was done. The clock's ticking on the imagery. That's in here clearly. The time limit on the first motion was Amy met that as required within that motion. So That's right. the first part of that motion was we had to have this committee and we would come up with these ideas by the first board meeting of that. So is that what part of that uh, motion did we have we not fulfilled yet? Because all the easy stuff has been removed. That's correct, but the large stuff is not. And it, but we did say that in the motion. It said with the exception of the things that are costly. Not, it's not on there at all. So what it so said was dreaming. everything was to be removed within one year. Mm -hmm unless it needed maintenance prior to that okay. then it would be removed during that maintenance so basically one year or less so there wasn't anything about anything that was costly on there is that nope. just in my own mind i think it was something we discussed but it was never but it was not officially on there and it was done without appropriations which is a little embarrassing you know we're not supposed to be making decisions like that without understanding the financial impact to the taxpayers so i think that uh, and I don't like, you know, I, I believe in supporting the majority decision and moving forward, but nobody's perfect. Sometimes we do things that maybe weren't um, well thought out and a correction needs to be made. And I think that's where we're at. I think the community told us that's where we're at. And I think that's another, I see it as a mitigating factor to try to bring some peace and, and quiet to the process and let us move forward in a measured way rather than then uh, leaving it in place. I think it would go a long way towards calming the waters so that we can get good participation moving forward. Yeah, I would see it would be plain. I would see it would be plain another, you know, I mean, it's good. one side will be very happy, one side will be plain when, you know, is there another way to say, hey, we'll put everything on the table and we'll vote it, vote it all together so we know what you're, you're voting on. You know what I mean? Well, the, you know, maybe if it comes down to the committee and that's what they decide, then that's what they decide. But as I say, ultimately, the decision 
still less rests solely with the board, not not anyone else. So, but I'm saying a board, a board rescinding those votes. I don't know that would calm the waters. It might calm the waters on one side of that, but it certainly would be taken as another another way from by by those that that might have been supportive of of that. So I don't want I I don't want it to feel like it's a conversation between you and I. But I would just suggest to that is then where do we put where do we start appropriating funds then to to carry out those motions if they stay? You yeah. see what I mean? Those I, motions I, have a timeline and, and invoke some responsibilities and action by the board that we either need to take or we need to pause or rescind or do something. But uh, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're sitting out there. Yeah, something needs to happen yeah. with those because. That I, could, that I could see. I could see extending it. You know, Can whatever. we see and that until motion? such time as or whatever. Can we look at it again? Because I'm searching, you know, I'm. Yeah. The gym, the gym on floor on alone, say that gym April. floor alone, we would have yeah. to start acting on very soon to get it scheduled right. for the summer. So we need to start bringing people in. The estimates we got are long expired. We'd have to bring people in again, get bids, yeah. and I'd have to work them into the coming year's budget. Can you pull up the so that needs to happen May. sooner than later if that's still going to stay. April 13th and April 27th for me. Did you have anything scheduled for the gym floor coming up? So just normal one. maintenance, not a deep, but not the that's not, not the scheduled yet. No. So we can leave the gym floor for now anyway. And, and the, the gym floor proposes another problem because it, it has both the red raiders on the end lines and it has the Indian pet in the middle. So it's also red raiders and the auxiliary gym on the floor. Correct. Oh, well. Wow. That's just used as practice, correct? And there's also red raiders painted on the walls. And the two stones are the biggest concern. April 13th. I, I do remember, I, I remember discussion being at this, at this, with this saying if there were things that would oh, be if you go to the minutes no just no, 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 bring that up the motion but they i do. changed they, they changed it no that's it that's it it was changed it right there yeah, in there okay thank you sure. but i was going to say i do remember the discussion being if Mr. Bean was to come back with something or if there were things that we're not going to be able to meet this timeline that we can bring those back to the board and address those at that time. So that's the way I would. So really the first sentence can still stand. I, so what image are we talking about there? The current Native American image. We have an Indian head, we have dream catchers, we have arrows, we have spears, feathers, spears, feathers, tomahawks. Well, it just if there was an S on the end of image, then <laughs> but there's not. And if there was 150 grand attached to it, that might help too. But there is a full better. Okay, the officially retire and then the replacement the time. I'm just suggesting to get rid of the part that seems to be that's putting the pressure on everybody right now, keeping the original, we're going to move forward. What it's going to look like is yet to be determined. Can I? So we either want to bring the community along with us or we don't. Um, because like, not trying to say anything to ruffle feathers, but they're not along with the people who are on this board prior to Jack and I joining, or Jack and I would not be sitting here. Um, if you want to bring the community along and you want this to not divide us or the student body anymore, because I don't know if you guys talk to kids in the high school, but my daughter will tell you, it is not pleasant there in regards to this image issue um, across the board. 
then in my opinion, the best way to move forward is to rescind both motions and allow an expert with a committee to do exactly what Mr. Gazar has stated, because at least then the community and the students aren't gonna feel like things are being jammed down their throat because for the last 18 months being not on this board, it has been nothing but that. Um, from the community members to the students. And that's exactly how it's felt, um, not being a part of any of this. And I think that's a really horrible way for us to present things to our community. The people who pay our taxes, who support our students, to support the school, that's a really, really just awful feeling to be on the other side of that. What's happened to the imagery that's been removed? Where, where is it? Is it like in a closet somewhere? <laughs> with Joe Paterno. It's with Joe. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not with Joe Paterno. Um, as far as being removed, uh, for example, we, there was a, there was also um, consideration, for example, the uh, carving of the, the Indian that we had in the entranceway of the high school. Um, there, when the board voted to remove that, there were some people that wanted that as a souvenir in their homes. So for its own safety, um, it, it was locked in, in a closet for that big image. Uh, other things have just simply been replaced by block B you know, a t-shirt or a uniform. Yeah, but the actual physical, you know, hold it in your hand type of imagery that, you know, was in display in the hallways and classrooms and things like that. So what has happened to trophies that? Are, trophies and all those things are still there on display. Um, the uh, scoreboard panels. They're still there. They're still there. So there are things that haven't been. The things that were that cost money were the ones that that um, have have still remained where they're at. My understanding: the things that have been removed were uh, anything like in a classroom that was just a piece of paper on a bulletin board, or you know those kind of things that could just be taken down at the end of the year. That's the we kind of stuff that was removed. Native American. The, each one year, the teachers each got a, a mag magnet that's the Indian head. Um, as a uh, staff appreciation gift, the teacher just kept them, took them home. I don't know what they did. They have them on their refrigerator hanging up uh, their pictures and <laughs> doctor appointments. <laughs> <laughs> but because it's been phased out for over the years, most of that stuff, I guess, is gone, has been <clears throat> phased out anyway. There's a, a Native American bust that's in the uh, showcase as you walk in the high school. It was a gift from the class of, again, I don't remember. It's a later class, like class in the 90s. It's a huge uh, bust of, of Native American. It's still there. There are a lot of pieces to the puzzle. I think that's one of the things that well, I was wondering if, like, if there was like, like a, a bus that was like prominently in the lobby and is no longer there. You know what had happened to that? You know, I mean, right now, you know, in our neighboring community, they're still trying to figure out where Joe Paterno's statue is, and nobody's talking. And it's just about like, um. One of the great mysteries of the area and i was just wondering if we had that similar situation well, here and i think there's a lot of rumor here as well because there are i i'm sure that you have gotten phone calls or emails my kid says this is no longer there or so and so said the floor is being redone or you know the ceiling oh, tile is missing <laughs> you know so there there is a, in the community people want to know people this hasn't gone away 
Mrs. Burnham, can you put all mysteries to rest? It's easy. I mean, have <laughs> they, count of everything that's been removed. Uh, no, I can't do that. But it, it, you, you, that's kind of funny. There was, I got a, a phone call from, I don't know, maybe it was one of you guys. I forget who called me. Somebody called me and said, uh, can you please quell the rumor that the gym floor is being done right now? I said, I am looking at the gym floor right now. It is not being touched by anybody. There's actually a couple of kids playing basketball on it. But so, you know, keep at every meeting, whenever, when I was asked what's been removed, I've said, and I've been very upfront about what's still there, what's art and, you know, ceiling tiles are all still there. I try to stay ahead of that, but, you know, people will make up rumors and, and things. Well, and all it takes is one person going into the mm -hmm. school who thought something was somewhere but it wasn't there, maybe it was never there, maybe it was there 20 years ago, and it's been removed because I don't know, it was old, it broke, whatever. But that, that continues, you know, to flood our community with Again, ill feelings. I think it, as long as those two motions are, are in existence. Because they're, they, yes, because yeah. they think that you got, you guys, I'm not including myself in that, they think that you guys are sneaking it out without telling them is it coming from kids it's coming from everybody like kids say kids adults i mean no it's not just kids so are these people who are going to events and seeing not seeing something or i think they could see something. a janitor taking a floor scrubber in there and yes. thinking it's a sand and if they and tell their, sand, yes. you know text their buddy and next thing you know by the time they get to the back of the class you know the sky yes. is falling and it's kids seeing things that the, the, the statue that was missing, the, you know, the carving. Um, both of my kids called me the day they went to school and it was not where it had been. Uh, I got calls before school started. You know, mom, they already took it. Um, and it. And it didn't take long to get back to the carver of the statue. And I got text messages and calls from his family about you know, where did it go? And to admin's credit, I think you've announced many times that it's not disappeared, it's just been removed. Well, at that point in time, it protection. hadn't been announced yet, but yes, right after that, it, that went out, but. When you have 30 people, you know, that mm -hmm. only, only 30 people that watch the board meetings, that doesn't exactly get around, so. And I think that's where a, a transparent memorialization right. project, coupled with this whole thing, would help that situation. Oh yes, that does exist and that will go here. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's so necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and keep in mind too, I, I'm not making excuses, but I was bound to that motion as well as ever. I know as far as removing things within a year. So we spent we didn't remove a lot of that, a lot of the, again, easy free stuff until the, um, when the teachers cleaned their rooms um, at the end of, of the school year in June or so, you know, a lot of them took things home that were there too. Um, and we did that simply for the reason you said, we had kids who were saying, where is all this stuff going? It's, it's being removed. And, and my concern has been the student body from the very beginning. And um, so I thought, we thought, removing then in the summer would be much less traumatic for kids because they would be walking into new rooms and the classrooms and not even knowing what was there before. So a lot of that stuff, again, if there were little signs or magnets or whatever, there was a sign in this room, in fact, that had the school rules on that had that flaming arrow on it. So they put a new one like, as we came back this fall. So. Anyone else? Any other comments or thoughts? Not to prolong this, but I do need something to relieve us of having to redo the gym floor and those type of things. They have to be started soon. So I, I do need something from the board 
if that's the most the way they want to move to release us from doing it. Okay, well, um, I agree with John. I believe uh, we need to have an up or down vote relative to rescinding those two motions. But wait, uh, time out. Doesn't that, though, can say about the maintenance on that motion? I'm sorry, what are you asking? The motion that we he just it does, it but it says that we have to remove all native American imagery within one year. Unless that just says in, unless I was unless doing something with it for, for that, and then I could go uh, ahead and do okay, it at that time. Me. Gotcha. Like I said, if I have to do the gym floor, I have to do it this summer, which means I have to get people in now to get it scheduled and get a price, get the board to approve the price. But we don't even have a replacement except for the block B. Um, and we don't even have that and final. We haven't even had that yet. Exactly. So I, I, they're problematic on a couple of different levels. Um, I also, um, again, everyone on both sides wants us to have some resolution to all of this. Uh, and um, we're not going to be resigned as a board until we have that vote to know where this board stands with it. We're just not tethered, given how problematic and forced it was to those actions that were taken by the last board. And in order for us to know, and people are gonna be unhappy either way, right? But to know where this board stands on this, we need to do that for ourselves, one way or the other. Because there's a lot we need to take on there's a lot of other things we're going to focus. So we got to know where we stand relative to these resolutions. So, so what's to say then that it gets rescinded and then the whole idea of going forth with the rebranding will then just be back for like before because there are other priorities, right? So like that's where that's where I don't like the rescinding part without the, hey, this is what we're going to, doesn't quite make sense to me. Because then that doesn't necessarily, I, I, I can see that being a rescinding, and then it'll be, we're back to where we were, and then perhaps there will be other priorities that kind of come up and we focus on and we won't talk about it anymore because there isn't, unless I guess that, that the, the rescinding of it has some action for moving forward otherwise. I don't know. You know, I mean, like that, that's where I can see it being a, a, a difficult kind of need to, to take that step back to be able to move forward. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, I know I'm going to be outnumbered um, probably, but that's my opinion. Mine would be to, to remove the, the, the part that's got Ken's. Um, that Ken's having a current yeah. real issue with, and that's the whole year part. So removing it and getting rid of the second piece that had to do with the year, that's what I would personally be the most comfortable with. Okay, thank you. And not to belabor either, are you talking both motions because the the Red Raider one doesn't have this year, doesn't have, I mean, the Red Raider motion is different than the, the one that was on April 27th looks a little bit differently than the one that was on April 13th. And that, that's the decision, again, where there's, it's a binary choice. The people either want to keep it or people want to have it be what the motion uh, that passed last April was. And again, I think this board deserves the opportunity to be able to uh, determine which direction we're going to go with it. Does the Red Raider have a uh, Red Raider resolution? Does that have a time frame? Just the point at which Tammy completed. She had the, the not the Red Raider, like, not Red Raider, not to the Red Raider, but there was part of that motion that said within such a period of time she had to be, bring these three recommendations to the board. So that was the time limit that was in that, but not specifically for the Red Raider. Okay, yeah. so it could it could go along with the process and take as long as it needed to be and evolve. Uh, yes, if the board so chooses not to rescind it, yes. 
Yes. That one. Yep. Yes. Anything else? I okay. guess, I'll, can I just, uh, I, was, I was thinking about something. You said you view the red as binary, either you want to keep it or you don't. To me, it, it depends. I don't know if that is necessarily as binary because it depends on what exactly a red raider is. Right. So I think, that, I comes out of, I think that comes out in the branding committee Correct. process. That's why I'm thinking why. that is not necessarily either, you know, keeping it or getting rid of it. it to me, I would have to see because it, Tying it with skin color of a, a race, that that's the you know non-starter. But if it was completely devoid of that and there was a strong case for a different kind of raider, not a Native American skin color, then that's different to me. I just wanted to mention that. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Uh, but again, informative uh, and um, productive. Forge ahead as we need to forge ahead. Uh, before we take a motion to adjourn, uh, the community needs to know that we will be having an executive session after the conclusion of this work session uh, to discuss um, matters of safety and health. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay.